Chapter 14. May I have this dance? Later that night, in the swinkest boutique in the Red Heart Lodge, you rifle through racks of dresses with Lino and Eve. Whatever I wear to the party tonight has to be look perfect. This is my first date with Blake. Wait, I thought you said Blake didn't call it a date. And you didn't either, since he didn't. Yes, but we're making progress. We're finally spending time together without Ra Rebecca between us. You have spent time together bef this entire trip. How is this any different? And also for the last 10 years. Maybe because Blake didn't even wait 24 hours until after our kiss to ask me out? She has a point, even if no one's willing to say the D word yet. And which word is that exactly? Well, even if no one has set date yet, kissing changes the game. Plus, I saw Rebecca packing and scheduling a ride to your pickup this morning. We are well and truly on the Blake and Jody train. Eve makes a face at him as you continue looking through dresses, hoping one of them will catch her eye. Well, that's why I'm in, or one, no need to show Blake that I'm all in on our making our whatever this is work. Maybe I should look through your closet again, Eve. Which dress were you going to wear for the dance? I could borrow one of your other... Sorry, babe, we're not going. What? How am I supposed to fly without my favorite wing man and wing woman? Well, I wanted to be there as backup, but Eve convinced me otherwise with her dumb logic and reason. If your thing with Blake is gonna work, you two have to find that out on your own, even without your favorite wingman. It's not like we're sending you to the ball in rags like a pair of evil stepmother Cinderella. Eve turns to one of the few untouched racks and pulls out a dress. The second you see it, you know it's the one. Here, I'm pretty sure Blake still has eyes, and anyone with eyes would love you in this. I'm just curious if any of you have watched Supernatural, if you guys know um, the woman who's the sheriff, right? She dressed up one time and it was like, wow. Oh, this, this dress and this, you know, character reminds me of her. You're right. You two aren't evil stepmothers. You're my fairy godmothers. Godparents? I can work with that now. Go finish getting ready. Your prince charming away. It's... Ten minutes before the dance, you admire yourself in the mirror, putting some finishing touches on your makeup. It's almost time I should head to the lodge, so I'm not... There's a cheerful knock on your door. Uh, just a second. You take one last glance at the mirror and then open the door to find... Hey there, stranger. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know about the whole, like, box look, but I like the color scheme. Ladies, let me know. Is the, is the box look in, or what? What's your opinion? Wow. You look great. Not that you didn't look great before, but uh, this is nice. You look nice. Wow. Easy there, Ballard. I'm not sure my ego can take many more compliments. I still can't believe you dressed up for me. I know we were uh, going to meet at the lodge, but I thought maybe I could escort you instead. How valiant of you, Mr. Marshall. He goes quiet for a moment as he looks you up and down, his gaze trailing across every inch of your dress. You feel yourself flush as his eyes widen. Sorry, it's just you look gorgeous. I don't think you've ever called me gorgeous before. His lips quirk in a thoughtful smile, his voice growing serious for a moment. Now's as good a time as ever to start. He grins a trademark grin as he holds his arm out towards you. Well, then if you're all set, would you uh, do me the honor of accompanying me to this dance? I'd love to. You loop your arm through his, and your chest brimming with warm, fuzzy sensation that feels an awful lot like hope. Before you know it, you're gliding to an elegant event hall. Wow. Fully stocked bar, fancy hoard of ores, a chocolate fountain. Are we in heaven? I'm pretty sure the bar would be free if uh, even in heaven, but we might be closed. You still want to get some drinks? Obviously. With your arm still looped through his, Blake guides you to the bar and flags down the bartender. 
I'd like a whiskey on the rocks, please, and a blackberry spritz for the lady. Like, I never tried one of those. I know. But if you're willing to trust me, I think you'll like it. I'm up for new experiences. The bartender passes your drinks across the counter, and you take a sip. Bottoms up. Fruity and fizzy. It's sweet, sparkling, and just a little tart. Blake's right, it is good, and the knowledge that he ordered it for you makes it even better. He smiles at you as he takes a sip of his own drink. So, stranger, come here often? Um, this is my first time, actually. What are the odds? It's mine, too. You both share a laugh, and almost feels like being back in college. Hopping between parties together all those times, you wondered if something might happen between you. But tonight, I'm not just fantasizing about it. Blake brought me here on his arm. He bought me a drink. Is Wanna see what else this place has to offer? Sure. Is that a photo booth over there? You head over as a group of front of you finishes their last picture. The photographer turns to greet you, smiling. Well, don't you two make a snazzy-looking couple? A couple? Oh, um, that's, um... You have to let me take a picture. You two are basically ready for red carpet. Blake rubs the back of his neck and gives you a slightly flustered smile. <clears throat> it's hard to say no to an offer like that. If you two uh, would just stand on the tape over there... Perfect! Alright, now, whenever you're ready. How do you want to pose for our first glamour shot, Judy? Goofy, dramatic, serious. Goofy. Blake sticks out his tongue and waggles his hand with the camera while you put on an expression of shock and confusion. Is this goofy enough for you? Yeah, that'll do it. You do your best not to laugh as the photographer snaps a picture. Not too shabby, but let's take just one more. Can you get a little closer together? You take a leap. Slip your arm through his waist, but he doesn't pull away. He just slides his arm around your waist, gently pulling you against his side. Like this? Exactly, I'll take the picture on three. One, two. Smile at the camera. His body is warm beside you, and even though you're both looking at the camera, you can practically feel him smiling too. Three. The camera flashes, Blake's arm stays around your waist for a moment before you both pull apart. Perfect. Here are your pictures, folks. Enjoy your evening. Do you use Polaroids? Because otherwise, wow, those develop fast. You and Blake take the pictures and head back across the room, both of you admiring them. These are so cute. He nods, and a strange smile plays across his lips. You were getting awfully close to me back there, Miss Ballard. Something in his tone makes you bold. You take a step closer, smiling up at him, and let your voice drop a little lower. Well, did you have a problem with that, Mr. Marshall? Not at all, actually. It reminded me. He lowers his voice, too, and tilts his head closer. His, voice, his words a soft whisper against your ear. I saw a balcony with one hell of a view on the way in. Cute, quiet place sliding door for privacy. An eager shiver runs down your spine at the thought of you and him alone, with a closed door between you and the rest of the world. Is he suggesting what I think he's suggesting? We could get some air if you want. Just the two of us. I just had to. Again, yeah, nice suit. Um, I just don't know about the box look, just so. I'd love to check out the view, as long as we'll uh, have it all to ourselves. Like a smile sends another shiver of anticipation down your spine. We will, guaranteed. He takes your hand and leads you out of the hall, down a corridor, through a sliding door that he promptly shuts behind you. You step onto a private balcony with a view of the surrounding mountains. Stars twinkle brightly overhead. Nice. Wow, I don't know the view from our cabin was nice. You rest your hands on the balcony, feeling the cool breeze on your face, and he steps up beside you. Yeah, 
absolutely worth the trip. He sounds completely relaxed, content, as he rests one of his hands atop yours on the railing. Maybe it was an accident. Maybe he just... But he doesn't move his hand. He turns to smile at you, and there's something inviting in his gaze that pushes your doubts away. Oh, we've seen the view. Um, gotten some fresh air. Check those boxes. Wow, are you corny. <laughs> yep. So, did you have anything else in mind um, while we're out here all on our own? He gently drums his fingers atop your hand, grinning. So, um, what makes you think I had something in mind? I, I could have just brought you out here to stand around and do nothing. But did you? No. I was hoping to try. His hands slide ever so slowly up your forearm. You're acutely aware of every movement, goosebumps rising on your skin in his wake. This. He pauses with his hand, still resting on your arm. He, look at, he looks at you as if you're, he's testing the waters. As long as that's, um... If, if you're okay with... It's one of the sweetest and most earnest questions you've ever heard. You answer by shifting your arm, letting his hand slide up even further. Yes. Inch by inch, his gaze never leaving yours. Blake keeps moving as he trails his fingers up the curve of your elbow across the arch of your shoulder. And this? Keep going. Your heart pounds as he trails up the curve of your neck, his fingers brushing across your racing pulse until he cups your cheek with one hand. And I should probably admit what I really uh, brought you out here for. And what's that? He tilts your chin up to capture your lips in a kiss that takes your breath away. You clutch his jacket, pulling closer, deeper, gasping softly against his lips. I've been wanting to do that since the second I knocked on your door. Oh, really? It's the kind of thing that you've always dreamed about hearing from him. Half of you is on cloud nine, but the other half has questions. I still have no idea if this is a real for him or if I'm just a friend now with benefits. But you're a little f dizzy from the kiss, and he's so close his heart or smar smile heart achingly perfect under the moonlight. Maybe tonight I don't need all the answers. I just need. I think you should try it again then. Well then, if you insist. He kisses you again. The world seems to melt away as your mouth opens and tongue meet, all while Blake wraps you in his embrace. Your whole body flushes with heat. He pushes you back against the railing, slotting himself between your thighs. You tilt your head back as his hands roam along your curves and his kisses trail down your neck. That feels so... His voice is a husky murmur in your ear as he slowly pulls your dress up, slipping a hand beneath the fabric to stroke your thigh. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. This feels... Good. You damn well know it feels good. You can hear the smirk in his voice as he nips at your neck, just enough to draw a gasp of pleasure from your lips. Ah, oh, well in that case... His hand slowly ventures higher. Oh, arching across your hip, you pull him into another kiss as your body instinctively leans into his touch. You pause for one moment to look at him. Peepers are wide, his breath coming hard. Whatever we do next could change everything. Jody, I... You gotta try that chocolate balloon, man. I nearly dunked my head in it. You and Blake hastily jump apart as someone walks past the entrance to the balcony, and just like that, you're back in reality. Sorry, I got, um, <clears throat> I, uh, lost track of time. Yes, time. Me too. Um, we should head back inside before we miss the first dance, yeah? Yeah, sure. Except, uh, 
He gesture at his jacket, askew slightly, must from where you clutched it. Let me fix that. You fuss with his jacket, straightening it out and smoothing the fabric, like stands patiently the whole time, although he sucks in a small breath as your hands brush across his chest. There, now you look all dapper again. He laughs and puts on a lock, look of mock disappointment. Oh man, now nobody is going to know I was making out with the hottest girl here. True, but we'll know. And that's still worth something to me. Blake gives you a smile that even after everything you just shared still sends butterflies fluttering in your stomach. You're right, it'll be our little secret. I like the sound of that. You bask in the cool night air for a long moment, smiling at each other before Blake leans in to steal one last kiss. Come on, I can uh, hear the dance floor calling. The two of you reach the dance floor just as music changes to a catchy beat, like immediately busts into an impressive rendition of the robot. Funky beat computes, feeling the rhythm, must dance. Nice moves, Mr. Robot. He goes from Robot into an effortless shuffle, and you can't help laughing. You gonna leave me dancing here all on my own, or are you gonna join me? Do the sprinkler, do my best, Robot, dance up close. <laughs> Why not? You lock your elbows, mimic Blake's robotic movement. He lets out a whoop of delight as you robot walk your way towards him. I thought I was good, but the competition is destroying me. At least you can admit when you've been outdanced. Yeah, only because I don't think robots can lie. Do my dance moves pass muster? I will have to test out one more thing. Here, take my hand. He holds out a hand, and the second you grip it, he twirls you towards him. Both of you sway back and forth to the music. Oh yeah, you definitely passed. The music suddenly changes to a slower, more romantic track. As people around you shift to dance in smaller groups, he raises an eyebrow looking thoughtfully. I have a feeling I can't robot to this one, so... Part of you expects him to step away. Instead, one of his hands slides to your waist as the other takes your hand. Your stomach flutters with excitement as you begin to slow dance with him, swaying in perfect sync as you've done this a dozen times before. Wow, smooth moves, Marshall. I have my moments. He leads you effortlessly along the dance floor. In his arms, you feel like the luckiest woman in the world. He takes your hands and gently guides them to rest around his neck. As you settle into his new, closer embrace, he slides his hands down your hips. Is this okay? It's... way better than okay. You sway your hips a little closer, and letting your body brush against his. As long as you're okay. Yeah, yeah, I think I am. As wonderful it feels to have his arms around you, a thought suddenly strikes you among all the giddiness. This music, it's familiar. Wait, is this our song? Yeah, I wasn't sure you'd recognize it. As Blake's face slides up with a grin, you remember all the countless times you've heard this melody with him. We've done this song at karaoke a dozen times, danced to it a dozen more parties, but never like this. I... It's just been a while. I, I can't believe you remembered. Uh, who do you think slipped the DJ at 20 to play it? I can never forget this number. Not when it always makes me think of you. You sway to your song, and with Blake, nostalgia sweeping through you. It's always... It wasn't always your song, of course. But that one night in college, we made it ours. It's been so long, I thought it was... Uh, I thought I was the only one who remembered. Remember that night. One night back in college at a karaoke bar with good tracks and very cheap drinks. You drive me crazy. Make this boy about to choke. Whoa. Shut the mouth's done, Lino. Lino belts out a tune on the bar stage with Felicia belting just as loudly right beside him. 
will treat you right, unlike those folks who think you're a joke. You, Blake, and Eve cheer them on from your table, and you aren't the only ones. The whole bar applauds as Lino and Felicia continue their epic duet. They're so good. Right? There's no way in hell that I could do that. Hey, you aren't that bad. Tell her to the campus casting director who reviewed my audition for Cats. I didn't know you tried out for Cats last semester. Emphasis on try. I thought it might help me get over my stage fright. Wow. That's how she was in college, or... Doesn't everyone who tries out get to be part of that show? Except for me. Director said I had a voice more suited for backstage. Well, he never saw you perform tequila at karaoke. Speaking of tequila, I'm gonna get us some more drinks. And maybe pass my number to the girl who's been smiling at me all night. She's cute, right? It's not the alcohol talking? Nah, she's definitely your type. Cool. Then I'm gonna go uh, try to kiss her face. Cheers! Eve saunters off toward the bar when she leaves just you and Blake listening to Lino and Felicia's duet. You and me were meant to be like the seas meeting the shore. Do you ever get a little jealous of those two? Jealous? Yeah, I love cheesy duets like that, but I've never had anyone to do them with. You never went to karaoke with Taylor? Ugh, please. Taylor hated this sort of stuff, and none of the other dates I've gone on have got a... It takes a special level of trust to sing in a duet in front of a crowd of drunken strangers at 10 p.m. Lino would totally sing with you if you asked. Yeah, but that's the other problem. He's got Felicia to sing with. You and me, we don't have to play games no more. The crowd goes wild as your friends finish their song. Then as they leave the stage, Blake tosses back the last of his drink and grabs her hand, pulling it towards the mic. What are you doing? In your duet, buddy. If I want to embarrass myself tonight, I might as well do it with you. Wow. So you're you're my hero. Don't thank me just yet. We still have to get up there and sing. Just watch. We're gonna win this crowd over. I can feel it. You're in a bar full of people who are drunk. I'm sure you could win anybody over. <laughs> You reach the stage. Blake examines a small screen with dozens of song options. I hope you know what you're doing, Marshall. Blake winks as he punches in a song number. A new track starts to play from the bar speakers. Trust me. A soulful rock ballad echoes through the room. You pick up one mic while Blake grabs the other. He shoots you a grin before belting out the lyrics. Every day I get this feeling no one can explain to me It gets my poor heart racing Oh baby, can't you see? I was so lost and lonely Like a ship to drift at sea But when we met I just knew it was always you and me heard the song dozens of times. It's the kind of thing you can sing with a friend. But there's something more in the air as Blake goes on. You keep my whole world spinning as long as it's you and me. Despite his jokes about embarrassing himself, his voice is swoon-worthy. He sings the word strong and clear, hitting every note with feeling. You're distinctly or distantly aware of Lino and Felicia whooping in the crowd as Blake strikes a pose and points at you. You and me, uh, you and me, it's always you and me. Did he just pick this one for fun or does he really mean? Jahar races, the next bar of lyrics appears on the little karaoke screen. We'll make it through, tried and true, as long as it's you and me. Sing something with more feeling. Stick with the lyrics. Stick with the lyrics, because it just works. 
I don't know. I'm actually kind of seeing, seeing something I'm more feeling. Let's try that. On. Let's let's see what she's capable. Let's see, let's see what she does. With Blake smiling beside you, the mic in hand, the rest of the bars fades away. So instead of repeating the lyrics, you say what you really want to say. <clears throat> you drop your voice low, filling every word with feeling. I know my heart is in good hands, as long as it's you and me. His eyes widen slightly at the twist of the words, but he doesn't miss a beat before improvising his own reply. If you hold my mind tight, I'll keep yours right, as long as it's you and me. Don't know what brought us together, but this much is plain to see. We're riding high, we're ride or die. Blake hits the high note, the words in your mind back to the night of your breakup with Taylor. The night you made that promise. As long as it's you and me. About the last words together, both of you busting out of the best air guitars and the crowd erupts into a wall of cheers and applause. Whoa! Those are my best friends! Those are our best friends! Who gives a shit? It's everybody's best friends. We're all drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you lift a hand to wave at your audience, feeling flushed from all the cheering, and Blake slides an arm around your waist. He looks just as breathlessly happy as you feel, the green lighting of his face. We did it, Ballard. Did that live up to your duet dreams? It was even better. You head towards the edge of the stage. Blake's hand lingers on your waist for a moment, the magic of the song still lingering between you. And that settles it. From now on, that is our song. As the memories fade, you can't stop yourself from smiling. Blake glances down as he guides you across the dance floor, raising an eyebrow. What are you smiling about? I'm just... Just glad we both still like this song. Some stuff isn't as good as you remember it being, but... The second this came on... I knew. Hmm. And it still got the magic? Yeah, it does. Smiling, Blake continues to sway with you on the dance floor. The rest of the world melts away while you're in his arms. The only thing that makes this one night more perfect is if Blake says... Oh, no. We, you know, this one about a perfect chapter. We could have just closed it. Come on, guys. That's the end of the chapter, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Ahem. <clears throat> All those giddy feelings vanish beneath confusion, shock, and a dash of rage as Rebecca steps onto the dance floor. Rebecca? What are you doing here? I thought you were going home. I was, but while I was waiting for my ride, I heard the music inside the lodge, and it made me remember the first night we were went clubbing. You make me feel things I've never felt before, Blake, and I couldn't just let that go easily. So I came here to find out if there's anything left between us worth saving. You watch in horror as she takes Blake's hand. Blake stands frozen between you, his expression unreadable. I'm sorry I pushed you too hard. Asking to move in together was way too much too soon. If I can let that go, do you think we could make things work? I... Blake glances between her and you. Everything you've shared since that first kiss flashes in your mind and you're full of a sudden certainty. He's gonna take my hand and tell her... I'm not sure. You're not sure? It's not a yes, but it's not a no. You stumble backward, the uncertainty in Blake's words make your heart sink like a stone. I need air. I can't. You need to be anywhere but here right now, so you turn and run out of the dance hall. 
Only once you get inside do you stop and collapse on the wall, just steps fighting back tears. How can he not be sure? Even after we kissed, after everything we've shared tonight. Jody, wait. He races out onto the steps in your wake, his eyes pleading. Blake. Please leave me alone. Words come out as a sob. For a moment, he reaches out for you. He pulls his hand back, but there's still worry etched across his face. I'm sorry, Jody. Really? Are you sure about that? Because back there, you didn't seem very sure about... Your voice catches in the back of her throat. I need to go. As you stand, Blake steps in front of you, holding up his hands in a ge pleading gesture. No, I am sure. I'm sorry for Rebecca showing up. I'm sorry for everything getting messed up when we were having such a perfect night. And I'm sorry for what I said. I'm just so confused. One moment you, you're kissing me like... I've never been kissed before. And the next moment, it sounds like you want to get back together with her. Do you actually care about me, or was it just the way for you to blow off steam? Of course I care. You should never just be some just right rebound. Blake lets out a sigh before slumping onto the stairs. You consider heading back to the cabin alone, but you find yourself sitting beside him. The problem isn't you, or even Rebecca. It's me. That raises a lot of questions, but there are worse places to start. You hold your breath and wait for him to go on. Before I met Rebecca, and after my last breakup, I spent so long trying to figure myself out why I couldn't handle commitment. I remember. Then, when Rebecca came along and things just clicked, I thought for a moment I could make it work. But I'm scared that if I give up, on fixing things, I'll never figure out how to commit to... to anyone. For one single agonizing moment, he glances at you and then away again, his expression torn. I get it. No, 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 I, I, I do. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I get it. I get it. I understand him. If I just keep or keep repeating this same pattern with her, won't I end up alone? Like, there are worse things than being alone, like leading someone on when you don't know what you want. I know, and I'm sorry, I, I feel like such a mess. Hearing Blake's fears, you think of the promise you made all those years ago, the whole reason you came on this trip. It sounds like he's not ready for anything like that. With everything going on, he might never be. So are you going to patch uh, things up with Rebecca? To your surprise, he takes a deep breath, shakes his head, pain and regret on his face shift to resolve. No. A few days ago, I planned to do an overnight hike with her tomorrow. Picked out a great spot, everything, but when I picture that hike now, I want to go with you. So, without further ado, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down in the description. Plenty of things to check out there. Leave a comment in the section. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Now I'll go ahead and say what I gotta say. I get it, right? I mean, even though I've never had that issue, I, I do get it, right? So, my number one tip, you know, I, I typically try and enlighten with every video I do. Um, understand from other people's perspective, right? Even if you're, if you've never done it, even if you disagree with it, try and understand from other people's perspective, right? Even if it makes you feel uncomfortable, because that is growth, it's personal growth, and that's also, um, you understanding what other people, like, there's 8 billion people on this planet, not everybody can think like you, right? I know some of us can't stand that idea. So... The thing is, um, we know that him and Rebecca, there were plenty of red flags, plenty of things that were wrong with the relationship, and plenty of things that, that I mean, they could be fixed if they both wanted to try, but then at the same time, they're going to give and take, um, and it's just going to end up a whole mess, right? A relationship, for the most part, is supposed to feel like two puzzle pieces just fitting together just perfectly, right? There's no, there's no, oh man, I got to give this up, and I got to do this, and I got to do that. There, there's not, right? Like, it's just, it's someone where 
from my experience, again, I speak from my own, it's just someone who you just want to spend time with, right? You don't want to smother them, but when it's something where you feel natural together, where you feel just right, you enjoy every moment with them. You do think about them when you're doing things. And that leads to, like, for instance, this is how, you know, today is, right, in terms of, you know, now and this year. Or if you're playing a video game and your she's not there with you, right? You would send her a text and be like, hey, babe, what's up? How are you? How's your day? What are you up to? You know, and, and, and just things like that, right? Even though you're completely doing something else. Even maybe if you're at work, you send them a text because you're thinking about them. Things like that. Like, things like that that are just, they seem so simple and yet they feel so right. Right? Um... And then you do things together. You have a favorite song. You have a favorite drink. You have a favorite meal. You you build and uh, on bonds and whatnot. And the 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 last piece of advice I can give you is the best relationship is a, your best friendship. Not even kidding. Like, think about this. A, a friendship is everything that a relationship is, but without the benefits. Think about it. Your best friend in the whole world may be the person for you. Because you've built all these bonds and everything together. And yeah, it doesn't always end up like that. But you're so close that it's such a thin line. And there's some people who can think of that. And then there's some people who can't think of their friend like that. Right? And that's perfectly reasonable and acceptable too. Um, But... You know, some of us actually care to cross that line with someone. Um, so yeah, you know, that's just that's just how it is. You you try and build a relationship. Yeah, you can. You just take it slow and steady. Everybody wants things like they want McDonald's, man. Like I'm serious. They want it super fast. Um, and uh, but da 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 da. That's not how it works. <laughs> so without further ado, love your beautiful faces. Thank you all for tuning in, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace out.